Hi guys, I guess you probably know that I'm very sad as I record this video, but before I go on any further, I should say, as one of my um, subscribers and fellow commentators told me, that you should not watch this if you haven't seen the episode yet. There are spoilers in this because obviously I want to talk about what happens, so stop now if you haven't seen the episode yet. Um, I think, to begin, I'm going to say that Cochrane by far deserves the Player of the Week award this week, and I think he's definitely on track um, for a win right now, though I do foresee certain issues starting to arise, but I'll get to those in a little bit. Um, let's backtrack a little bit and see how Cochrane's game was so stellar this episode. Um, so the auction. Malcolm obviously knows that he needs any kind of strategic advantage that he can get and saves his money, or at least in theory at, at first, but he did eventually save his money to get a clue to the next immunity idol, um, which was great and a good move to do. I think that no one else in the game, and surprisingly neither Reynold or Eddie felt the same way, but uh, no one else was willing to give up that money. I mean, they obviously didn't want Malcolm, Eddie, or Reynold to get it, but they were too focused on getting food, except for Cochran, who we did not hear a peep from until another strategic advantage came along, and uh, and he got it, and it was a more concrete one because it was for the immunity challenge to come. And uh, I'm really surprised that neither Ed Eddie nor Reynold um, jumped on that opportunity. I mean, they didn't even try. Um, so I'm a bit disappointed with that, and clearly it, it bit them uh, in the behind. Uh, Andrea, I thought she would be more likely to flip than um, Sherry and Eric, even though clearly they <laughs> didn't quite flip. Um, but clearly she was really ironclad on the alliance and um, and her move to prevent idol uh, to prevent Malcolm from finding the idol was definitely a good one. And I mean, do you what do you guys think? Do you think that her staying there actually did prevent him from finding it? That he just didn't have enough time to look for it more? Um, it, it was unclear how long they were sitting there, but it did look like it was a while. Um, I think, personally, he should have just kept digging. So what if she would have started digging around him? Maybe she would have found it, but in this case, like, he just didn't find it, and then he ended up going home. I think he should have at least tried. He had more information about the clue. He would have had a higher chance of finding it, even with everyone else digging around him. So... Um, I think he should have kept digging and that that was a mistake. I wonder if before he left he gave the clue to Eddie and Reynolds. Um, I mean, he may not have any interest in doing that now that he's gone, but um, if he wants to just like kind of do an extra thing to bring down Stealth or Us, maybe he did give them the clue, but we didn't see any of that, so who knows. Um, Brenda, hi, nice to see you again, nice to see you in some confessionals there. Um, she definitely got her share uh, this episode, which was, I guess, nice to see, uh, but nothing like particularly mind-boggling either. Um, Let's move on to immunity. Uh, Cochran definitely did well. And again, we have Eddie saying, oh, Cochran's not a threat, threat, la la la. And then Eddie was just staring at Cochran in the final like two person left stage of the game. And that was his undoing because he was just looking at him. It's like there's a balancing game in it. There's a focus in it. And Eddie just wasn't focused. And that's why um, why he slipped. That not just having it to hold on to is a huge advantage. And I think Cochran did the right thing to take the advantage of the uh, um, the two not upgrade uh, immediately because obviously he would just tire less fast as opposed to waiting till the end to go up. So good strategy there. Another kudos to Cochran uh, in this episode. Um, then the post immunity challenge pre tribal scramble. Um, Sherry and Eric were the ones who had the power to um, create a, a flip in the game, um, and yet they did not. So the question is why. Um, I don't think that they're very high up on the totem pole in Stealth R Us, but when I think about it more, I actually think that they are probably good bets to take to the end for either Andrea or Cochran um, or Dawn, really. Um, so, or even Brenda, if she could orchestrate that, but it doesn't seem like she has much orchestrating power in the game right now. Um, so I guess I understand why they didn't flip, because I think that they do have a higher chance of getting to the end, whereas if they had flipped, it would still have been Eddie, Reynolds, and, and Malcolm at the end 
Although maybe not. Malcolm would have probably tried to take Sherry and uh, and Eric to the end too. Um, so really it was either way for them, but this way they don't really cross anyone. So I think for themselves they made the right decision, even though it's not really what I wanted them to do. Malcolm, come back. Um, so yeah, and, and then again, Cochran, super perceptive, super attentive. Um, I don't know how it came out that Eric voted for Philip. It seemed like for Cochran it was just a given, but he definitely took that into play when he was thinking about their strategy and realized how easy it was for them to have the split go wrong. Um, so I don't know, I don't know how they came to take that risk. Andrea was definitely more for doing the split vote. Um, and again, that shows to me how much of a better player Cochran is to Andrea, because Andrea, as soon as she gets nervous, she's like, no, 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 splitting, this is safer. Um, and she's not willing to take risks um, as much as Cochran is and really take responsibility for it. So um, kudos again to Cochran for that. So for the vote, I was very sad to see Malcolm go, but I was prepared for it. I knew that it was coming. There's only so much uh, uphill battling you can do, really. And uh, I don't think he could have done much better in his situation. I think that he had it easier at the beginning of the game because he was on the winning tribe with the favorites, but he was still um, basically a fan as much as um, they, as, as it were, because nobody knew who he was. Um, I think that Corinne um, was his downfall, partnering with Corinne. I don't think he did it intentionally either because they found the idol together and that just instantly bonded them. Um, but I think if I look back at his game, um, that's, where, uh, that's where his game kind of lost its footing. So what's next? It looks like the six are gonna turn on each other. Um, it was obvious that Brenda and Dawn are now at the bottom, hence the Eric and Sherry uh, good move there. Um, I think Cochran is starting to become a threat and people are realizing, I mean, he's always been a threat, but he's still kind of played it under the radar and that's been an advantage for him so far. Um, but now, I mean, I think it was Eddie even said it, that he was just like a big threat in the game, which I'm sure Cochran loved to hear. Um, so I think Cochran's actually gonna have to start to work harder like as hard as Malcolm had to work because I think he's really the last remaining threat uh, in the game and I hope he'll win I really hope he will because he deserves it Malcolm deserved it if I mean everybody deserves it when they get to the end but I really would love to see Mal um, Cochran win Malcolm laughs us there you go I would love to see Malcolm win um, but yeah so uh, yeah, if Cochran can get Sherry and Eric to the end with him, I think it's his game to lose. I think he'll have it. So good luck, Cochran. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'm going to post a link to my blog in the description at the bottom, and I look forward to your comments. See you next week.